Right, welcome to uh, Pop for the Saints with the trombone playing uh, Lee Wood there. Good evening, Lee. David, Jacob, how the devil are we? Well, we're better for that musical introduction, aren't we, Jake? <laughs> Very much so. I like my week already. I'm here all week. I'm available for Christian, you know, bar mitzvahs. All I, wish, all that I wish you'd told me that a little while ago, Lee, So. Because you were so good then. I had to pay 25 quid for that blooming signature tune we had at the start of it. If I could, no one could have got your services for free, we'd have gone for it. I was going to say, mate, you partying with, with £25 is just unheard of. It won't Worth happen every again. penny, David. <laughs> of course it is, of course it is. Right, as we said, Pop Full of Saints, our 32nd edition of the season. We're recording it on Thursday, the 3rd of February 2022. And that three for the third is very significant. Because on Saturday against Slough Town, we played our 33rd game of the season. It was our 3,333rd game on a Saturday. It was our third successive home win over Slough Town. It was their third successive uh, away game without winning, I think it was. Um, three o'clock kickoff, as you may have noticed as well. We've got three points, courtesy of Johnny Goddard's third goal in the Hatfield Road end of the ground. And uh, the final three, uh, £16.50 to get in, which is only £3.50 more than it was at Chippenham earlier in the week. And, and three Herberts all sitting here talking about it. <laughs> Wonderful. Who's going to kick us off then, boys? Oh, my God. Right, can... uh, so when I was Slough Town, we very much needed it. Um, John Underwood, their joint manager, gave a very good interview, I thought, on their site afterwards. But uh, what did you two make of the game? Lee? <laughs> you could tell from the first 15 minutes that the tempo, uh, you know, was higher than it had been in previous weeks. Um, the urgency was there, the passing, um, the appetite as well, boys. Um, yeah, it was an improvement, wasn't it? Which, let's face it, is not saying a great deal given on the past few weeks, but it was an improvement nonetheless. And the win was vital. I mean, there was still some discontent on the terraces, Jake. You know, we were walking behind the back of the stand, sort of taking our place. And you can hear that people were sort of quite edgy and quite nervous about the game. And even though Slough aren't the greatest opposition to grace us this season, it was still a game where we could have come unstuck. Um, but on the whole, I was really buoyed by the fact the appetite was back to a certain degree. We missed some glorious chances um, and it could have been more. But then again... It's three points. Yeah, as you say, that sort of fight and desire was, I think, the real difference, wasn't it? Because, you know, against Chesant, etc., you know, we had 15, 20 minute spells where we controlled a lot of it and we'd started well and we had chances and didn't put them away. But Slough, you know, we kept going at it. We kept going at it, you know, and we, we didn't really let them have too much of a sniff. I know they had a couple of half chances, but Saints overall controlled you know team worked well I thought for the first time actually in a little while as well especially after the Chippenham game but tactically I thought Ian and Chris got it spot on really you know it worked well but we have to say Slough weren't particularly up to much and it was a game as we've said last week we had to win that three points you otherwise if you lose that you're really dropping away so good win get a bit of momentum going into some tough games and Brilliant goal from Johnny Goddard, I thought. It was good to see him step up and hit the back of the net after he's missed a, a few glaring chances lately. Hey, Jake, speaking of glaring chances, mate, Sean Jeffers, a yard out. Oh. Would you have scored that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, it was like in slow-mo, wasn't it? It was like, oh, lovely ball across, Jeffers is here. And then, why is it not cross the line? Why is it not? It was almost harder net? to miss it, wasn't it? You know, it was... Um, <laughs> That's the goalkeeper's foot. But even so, even so, you've got one of the hottest strikers in the entire division. He's a yard out. He's on the floor, admittedly, and a little bit of dance up with their defender. But even he's got to be banging that in, surely. <laughs> I, I thought the performance actually, um, Slough, I thought, had the balance of a play just. I shaded the play. But they looked very weak up front. They didn't really threaten us. Whereas we, in some respects, we carried on from where we left off in the second half at Chippenham. We were creating chances. We had the better chances. No two ways about it. But as you highlighted there, um, we maybe didn't take all the good ones that came our way. So there is encouragement from the last game and a half in as much as we are looking a threat again up front, uh, which we haven't done for a while. No. We haven't at all. And even though it wasn't Jeffers, you know, it was a goal from someone else, much needed. And they say going forward, I thought we played 
a good attacking lineup with Banton and Vice, etc. And again, a lot of supporters at the end, even though he wasn't spectacular, were commenting on Mitchell Vice's performance. He battled and won the ball. I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, I thought he, he was outstanding. And I think we've missed that again. Him being sat on the bench. I know he's a decent impact player from the bench, but I think most supporters would much prefer to see him starting from the off and really fighting because he offers something different, doesn't he, as well? And him and Sean Jeffers last season had such a brilliant connection as a front two at times. And I think yeah, when they play together on a Saturday or Tuesday night, I think you can see that. I see the uh, number in the NLP gave man a match to uh, Mitchell Weiss. Uh, Jake, I think you've got a hand in that somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe. Hey, Dave, who, if, if it wasn't Mitchell Vice, who would you suggest? I'd be interested to hear what you, who you think was man of the match. Oh. Well, I'm going to oh. change it. Uh, according to Slough Town, their man of the match, they went for Jonathan North, which is goalkeeper, of course, experienced yeah. goalkeeper, which um, highlights perhaps how much uh, more of a threat we were than uh, of late. So that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah but, but the thing is, though, boys, it was never going to take masses and masses of work for us to get back to the levels of where we needed to be. No. It was just application, wasn't it, as well? And maybe one or two new faces just to freshen things up because that does just bring an energy into the changing room at, at times. And I you suppose... Know, go Sorry, go ahead, Lee. No, I was just going to say, you know, it was very... I'm listening to Ian's post-match from last week when he made a very sort of throwaway, lazy comment about it being desperate if we sign players at this stage. Well given the fact that our run of results wasn't the best, did that not sort of smack of, of desperation? You know, given that in context with the previous four months' worth of work we had, mm. you know, uh, it's, it was very unlike Ian because, you know, he's an intelligent manager to come yeah. away, with, you know, from, from that. And it's very lazy throwaway comment, which would, would have done nothing to steady the ship and the nerves of people on the run that we were on. So I, I was just going to say the application was definitely there, and um, the lads fought hard for the, the lads fought hard for their win, and I thought they deserved it. Yeah, and I think we should mention as well, we've mentioned the attack, but defensively, another clean sheet against Slough weren't up to much going forward. But you know, take away the Chippenham game, that's you no know, two clean sheets out of three. We can't complain about that, considering at times defensively we've looked all over the place. So you know, another positive there. And again, the defence just battled, didn't they? But they did the basics right. And I think that's where we've probably been going wrong in the last month and a half, two months. How's it smiling? This can't yeah. be just... <laughs> well, I think no, we've got a just cracking, idea, cracking idea of Jake's. We just ignore the games where we let three in. We've had a good season still, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we beat them 1-0. Well, obviously, our goal shouldn't have counted, but there you go. <laughs> but we do have to take the positives after the run we were on, especially defensively. Because at times we were at sixes and sevens in the last month. So small, small stepping stones. But at the end of the day, as Dave said at the start, three points. That's the important number. You two mentioned uh, uh, new signings and whatnot. And we hear rumours there's supposed to be some about to come off. And one did come off this week. A loan signing for the rest of the season. Cameron Green, a left-sided player. Possibly more defensively than attacking, but he's described as a left wing back. That's an interesting signing, isn't it, for several players? Yeah. I don't know if it's as interesting as people are making it up. Because if you think, Ian likes to have energetic fullbacks, right? So he's now got the fellow from Luton, he's got Cameron Green, and that might just give him now the energy up and down the flanks. It's going to help the likes of Vice and Banton. Um, there are more obvious needs in our side, but I don't think it's a massive surprise because... We, he loves the energy, and these two signings are going to provide that in tons. Well, Alex Lancashire, of course, has been left back most of the season. He was left out last Saturday. Uh, does that mean uh, he slipped a little bit down the pecking order, do you think, or not? I just think he's down to fitness, mate, if I'm honest with you. I mean, he's a young lad, and I know that this is, you know, he shouldn't be tired, he's young, but you know, he's putting a damn good shift over the last few months. And... It might just, it will do him the world of good to have a rest for a few games because then he might get that hunger back. And there's nothing to say that, that Green can come in and play in another position down the left, perhaps, or even push, push Lancashire on. Because don't forget that Lancashire was an attacking left sided player um, in school. So he's, he's well equipped to sort of do that job. But 
It's about options. And that's something that Ian hasn't necessarily always had this, this season. Quality options at that. We look at the other side of the sense. We cried out for a right back all season. We finally got uh, Avon Jones. And I don't want to put him down, but I don't think he's lived up to what he did on his debut down at Welling. Um, he makes one or two mistakes. Distribution can be a little bit dodgy. But he looks a footballer. Maybe he's still settling in. I don't know. But um, I feel we, we can probably get more out of him when we get in the last couple of games. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think on Saturday, it was obvious that, as you said, his distribution and passing wasn't quite there. Defensively, he didn't look too badly out of place. So I think he's just got a few things to work on, as you say. Um, talking to Cameron Green, um, Lee, you'll have seen it. I mean, Wrexham fans, on the whole, I think quite disappointed to see him go out on loan. Also to see him go on loan to National League Southside, for all accounts. A lot of them seem to think he's better than this level. Um, and apparently he's really quite an exciting player. Um, and he's really kicked on. So, as you say, you know, not an ideal position, but everything I've said, it sounds like a bit of a coup, actually, from the Saints to get him. And I think, you know, Ian will be happy. And does it possibly indicate that, you know, mention Lancashire, but does it indicate that are we going to go see Bender go inside again to centre-half for the next few weeks, Inside maybe. the tunnel or inside the... Oh, inside, right. Yeah. I spoke to a few of the fellas at Wrexham and they are not surprised because he needed some game time. And mm. yes, he's a good player. He's a good, young, industrious player. But they wanted... They very much see him as part of their future. But in order to get that game time, he's, he's got to be game ready. OK, so when he's been called upon, he's going to step into the freight at National League level um, and just hit the ground running. And in order to sort of do that, they were never going to let him go to another National League side. But National South, a team that likes to play football when they can, with good players around him. And we were the perfect fit for that, Bill. And he's, he's played a few games in the National League already, hasn't he? He's made quite a few appearances for Wrexham. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he's got that experience. It's not going to be like Avan Jones, who's pretty much coming straight from under-23's academy, etc. So I think, I think hopefully he'll do well. And I know it's easy to say, but on his Twitter and social media, he looked he looks really up for it. You know, he's he's sort of had a reaction that sort of no other signing has this season in terms of how excited he looks to be. So, I mean, the commute from North Wales to St Albans on a Tuesday Thursday night for training is, you know, I'm sure he'll get to love that. But yeah, so get a lift for you, Tabs. <laughs> you have a safest thing to do in the world. <laughs> but but at least he wrecks them, mate. Safe, safety goes out the window as far as that's concerned. Well, it's, it's nowhere near Essex, so it'll be all right. We're okay. Ah, goodness, um, I think he's only played about half a dozen games, hasn't he? First team this season, something like that. So you can see why Wrexham have loaned him out. It makes sense for him and for them. And of course, he's got experience at this level. He played for Braintree Town and he played for Watford under 23s and a friendly against us in all, uh, July 1919, a 2 2 draw down. 1919. He looks well for it, doesn't yeah. he? Blimey. Just seeing if you're paying attention. Using? I could do the team sheet, couldn't I? Uh, should we go for 2019? Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> I think def defensively, it gives Ian a few more options, doesn't it? You know, people have mentioned that we need a centre-half. Maybe this suggests we're not going to get a centre-half. We might see Bender go to centre-half himself. And then the next position I think people want is that, that central midfield spot. So, Well, we saw one last Jake. Saturday. Yeah, but don't oh. forget, though, um, fellas, that... Signing players at this time of year is a desperate act. Well, if signing the likes of Cameron Green is going to be a sign of desperation, then maybe we should be a little bit more desperate yeah. and get some more players in because you can see the quality that he brings to the side, you know, and that is exactly what we were crying out for. Fresh face, new enthusiasm, a new set of eyes, eyes and ears, but obviously a quality player to go with it yeah. as well. When we played at Slough early in the season, I thought their central midfielder, Aaron Cole, he, he was outstanding. I thought he had another very good game Saturday. He's an attack-minded, he's quite happy to defend as well, midfielder. And he's the sort of player we're looking for, isn't he? Slough don't need him, they don't go, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> you'd, you'd love someone like that, wouldn't you? But you have, you, you have to wonder if someone like Slough has someone like that under contract. Because I suspect, as you say, Dave, He's stuck out, but he's not only stuck out to us. I've heard a lot of good reviews of him this season in a Slough Town side that's not been great. So I'm sure there's a few clubs. But yeah, imagine if we had someone like that in midfield of those legs. Again, you know, it throws me back to Menashe and Solomon from last season. Either one of those in our midfield this season, they might not score a lot of goals, get a lot of assists, but the amount of running they do, 
if we could find someone like that for the final running, we've got a chance. I noticed you sort of stopped clear of mentioning people like Kieran Monlui in all of this sort of breath as well, because although, you know, Kevin Kranz, uh, cool. you know, all of the, <laughs> I know, cool. I know. Just, well, Where, where's Solomon Sambu? That's the question. Get him back. Get him on the pod. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. Um, That's not what you were saying off air, David. As we said, we needed that win. It gives us a four point gap over Haven and Waterlooville, which is where we go Saturday. And it keeps us just in that group. I know we're down to 10th now after the midweek games. But um, if things go favourably for us at Wesley Park on Saturday, we could go up to six. But just to win, that'll keep us in there. And we're games in hand, keeps the pressure on the other sides. Absolutely. As you say, that pack from third to tenth is really tight at the minute, isn't it? And, you know, a win either way. And you can propel yourself. And again, a win on Saturday against Slough, it's the kind of game you have to be winning. They're not great. Whereas the games coming up that we'll touch upon in a minute, they are, will be much more indicative of where we're going to be come the end of the season. Well, I haven't, of course. I think with most, what, most of it was tips uh, to win the league. We'll certainly be in the top two. And they're nowhere near it at the moment. I say four points adrift of us, 11th in the table. We've got a couple of games in hand as well. They are six without a win, one win in 10, and uh, no win in the last seven home league games. Ooh. I know being a City fan has been pretty dicey the last month or so, but imagine if you were a Havoc fan, spaffing all that cash, right? And you're no better off for it. I mean, you know, that's, that's hard to take as well, isn't it? The fact that, and I appreciate the, you know, we had to sort of see this coin from both sides. Ian has had his fingers burnt in the past by signing players mid-season. So maybe that's at the back of his mind as well. And he looks at the, he's now looking at the sides like Haven, who are absolutely dishing out the pound notes like there's no one's business. And they're in no better position than us. So I almost see the reluctance um, to go splashing cash on players. But then again, you know, if it bolsters up a really good squad and adds to it, that's, that's where it's at. I think the, the run we have coming up now, boys, the eyes don't lie. We are still going mm. to have to improve considerably to get a good uh, um, acquisition of points out of the next three or four games. Yeah. Um, current form, you, even with our current form, you would like to think you're going to get something out of Saturday, but haven't they really got to dig in now? If they lose Saturday, they're asking for... So quite well, it's quite a turnaround in fortunes to catch up all that lost ground. So there's it's going to be a big game. There's a lot on them for that Saturday, possibly even more than us. Absolutely. I mean, if you just look through their squad list on, on their website, which I, which I am now, the names on there is just unbelievable what they've got and where they are in the league. You know, James Rogers, Billy Clifford, Alex Wall, Paul Rooney, it's Sam Magri. It's, it's unbelievable their squad. You know, and it was the same last season. They spent loads of money, and even though it's curtailed weren't exactly in a great position then and of course Paul Doswell you know he's a manager he's got success at his level and it is a huge game for them and I remember the game at Clarence Park earlier season I think did we win 2-1 Dave or was it 1-0 uh, Joe Newton goal. Joe Newton the coach, boy. and I, and I, I remember I remember it being a, a real slog and battle of a game but I remember coming out of that thinking how good we did because of the strength of that haven't side but they've just fallen away since they've just unbelievable form like as you said Dave the, the stats you read out so massive game Saturday and we've got to go there confident and not scared of those names you know I'm sure there's some clubs that will go there like oh look at those I mean you know James Roberts how many did he get last season for Oxford City so yeah just a couple yeah but, yeah, but so, Jake the thing is though mate it sounds as though half of the league haven't been scared of those names so well exactly why should why should Saturday be any different I players agree. players names are all well and good and they look impressive when you're doing flashy goal gifts and social media graphics but when it comes to applying yourself on a on a, a pitch you know when people are demanding effort from you mm. it's not always you know we've seen how many journeyman ex-pros or high named national league level players have we seen that think oh my god we, we've got him on saturday he's going to tear us a new one and you had people like tom bender had him in his pockets mate so mm. you know let's 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 go into this thinking, actually, they are where they are for a bloody good reason. 
yeah, I, I think what we do know about Saturday, it'll be a physical occasion. And I think it'll be a real fight. But again, as we keep saying, if the Saints fight, they can match anyone almost in this division, I'd say. You know, again, look at Maidstone. We've got a point against them and they are going gangbusters at the minute. But, you know, fight for three points that they got a chance. Dave, how did Haven get along against um, Dorking a couple of weeks ago over Christmas? They didn't do so well back then, did they? Uh, Dorking kept a clean sheet. <laughs> Haven <laughs> fell a little bit short, as I recall. Uh, well, yeah. eight times they fell short. Yeah, it was, eight, was it 8-0? Yeah, it was 8-0. Yeah. Incredible, wasn't it? Even, even with 10 men, it shows how fallible they can be at the minute. And then they lost the follow-up. Was it 4-0? Dorking? And I know Dorking in great form, but... Uh, you're confusing that with Ebsley, who oh. we got next Tuesday and have been on a magnificent run of late as well. Um, their last four games, 5-1 defeat at Dorking, 4-0 defeat at Maidstone, then they beat Hampton 1-0, and last Saturday, 1-0 defeat at Dartford. It's just when they look like coming through, they've been blown aside. Dorking have won their last 10 league games, and uh, obviously they have a side to stop at the moment. And... Uh, Ebsleep won't decide to do it. Uh, of course, we've got Ebsleep then next Tuesday. It's, 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 ha- if haven't hit form, it's going to be a tough one Saturday. And the same for Ebsleep again next Tuesday. Um, they got Sefa Karaman, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he's sent off twice in his last two or three games, so he's, he's hit a bit of consistency. Um, but they're going to need to bounce back, aren't they? And they're going to see us as one of the sides to do it and try and knock us out of the race a bit. Yeah, I think, you know, out of the two games, I think I think, I think think we'd all agree that Tuesday night's going to be the tougher one. Um, Every on a Tuesday night, love the place to go. Hope you're not driving, Dave. Um, so it's, it's going to be difficult. Um, but again, you know, depending on how we get on on Saturday, we might be going there full of beans. We don't know. I think one thing we can guarantee on Tuesdays we'll have really good support there. If not, it's hard to get through from St Albans. But, you know, like, Ebsley, again, they don't scare me this season. Even though they've done reasonably well, do do they worry me that much? Not particularly. Nothing scares you, Jacob. You're the one doing all of the scaring now, mate, with that beard. Jesus Christ. I mean, Ebsley, on the the side, isn't it weird how we, two or three years ago, we spoke the likes of, you know, Slough and Ebsley, and we did honestly look at those things and go, oh, that's going to be a really, really tough sort of game. These aren't the teams to be feared now. You know, yes, they're a good side, etc. But Ebsfleet, bearing in mind that they ran away with the league, you know, a few years ago. Now, they're not to be feared. They're to be respected, but they're not to be feared. Yeah. Did somebody mention Kieran Monlui earlier on? Is he Ebsfleet? I did. How, how's he getting on? He's at Ebsfleet. Oh, so he'll yeah. score then. Brilliant. No. Oh. Yeah, it says uh, his profile. Uh, oh, you can sponsor him. He hasn't got a sponsor yet this season. He's shirt number 23. Uh, most recently design. with Horsham, whenever that was, noticed for his box to box and technical abilities. It's funny, you don't get many footballers not noted for their technical abilities, but there you go. It's not the same player, surely, is it? What about, what about, maybe maybe what about, we should sponsor him. How, how much money have we got in the Pod for the Saints coffers, fellas? Whoa, well. Hey, uh, Tavano, if you, if you could afford to splash out £25 on a very dodgy version of oh when the saints and we've got a few quid fighting around surely i did have to have paid for that yeah <laughs> tight swipe <laughs> and of course jake's not scared of Ebsley. he's proved the other week he's uh he's uh well what's, what's the word i'm looking for he's, he can't be beaten he's indestructible oh don't say that goodness well, i don't know me <laughs> goodness sake Dave. um yeah Ebsley, they've got They've got the German manager, haven't they, that you mentioned earlier. And um, I remember last season... When he got sent out, off and, uh, when they yeah. lost 4 nil at Maystone as well. Yeah. Um, I remember last season when they came down to France Park, of course, behind closed doors. Um, it was a real tactical battle. Um, and the Saints, I think, went 2-1 down. And then Chris Winton changed things up, went for a three at the back, I think it was, and won 3-2. So I wouldn't be surprised if, again, Tuesday night, where Saturday might be quite a physical strong battle, I wouldn't be generally shocked if Tuesday night is a bit more tactical bit more better football from both sides and it'll be an interest to see how the Saints cope with that but you know the Saints again it doesn't mean much of course but going to back of both these games on decent results in the last year and a bit against these sides against these managers and we know Ian loves playing the likes of Paul does well I mean remember when he used to play Rod Stringer every couple of months and he had he had him on strings so Ian loves coming up against these black these managers. Out of the managed. brains, that is, fellas. I tell yeah. you. 
Exactly. But, you know, Ian loves coming up against managers he's been managing against for years because they know each other, they know what they're all about. And I think he'll really relish these two games. Absolutely, we were actually uh, 2 0 up last season when we turned them over. There you go. Even better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah even better, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't use that as any form guide for our uh, uh, Tuesday, though. But uh, no. we have no form guide. That's <laughs> why. We, that's why we, <laughs> we're struggling so much. Stuff. But, but, well, well, we often ponder players coming in. What about players going out? Because there's a few players that are on the bench. They come in for a game or two, get kicked out, back to the bench again. Can you see anybody possibly looking to go elsewhere to get game time? I, th- I think if. Ian is going to make the moves this week because he's already made one and potentially another one or two this week or in the next week. I think we'll see potentially one or two either go out on loan or leave. I noticed that Romeo Acadola posted like a highlights video of his goals and assists so far this season. Wasn't which, really a highlights video, was it? You know, it wasn't. <laughs> it's not the sort of thing you should be retweeting. That's too harsh often. on Romeo. We all love him. Um, so you binned him off for the last month. What are you talking about, boy? No, no. So. <laughs> So that's always an indication there might be something going on there. We don't know. He might start on Saturday. But yeah, with Cameron Green coming in and maybe someone else, I think there's there might be room for letting one or two go. I don't know, Lee, what do you think in terms of anyone departing? I mean, I've just seen the same, you know, rumour mill that you've seen online. And as much as you can take the word uh, of a designer and, the, and Twitter, for that instance, you know, we've got a couple of offers on the table, we're just waiting for the purse string to be loosened a little bit and we should have some new faces until that time comes. I think, I, I mean, I don't know whether Ian wants to rely on the academy players, new academy players at this stage. I think he'd love to have some established midfielders come into the side because uh, we've got some very, very tough uh, tests coming up. Um, Akinola. Fine, decent enough player. Um, not really hit the heights that I thought he might have done at this level, if I'm honest. If he does go, it's, you know, Ian won't let him go unnecessarily. So, but again, it, it, it's it's a it's odd timing though, isn't it? That when you start putting out highlight highlight reels um, mm. with some very suspect backing music as well, I have to say. Um, don't wait, Dave. It's not enter shiitake or whatever it is that, oh, that you don't grief. like. I, I suppose another question mark would be over Liam Soul, wouldn't it, at the minute? You know, he's had a l- much less game, play, game time than Romeo. He's not lived up to it either at all. I mean, Romeo has at least contributed a couple, you know, a few goals, few assists. Liam Soul's what, got two goals and that's it? And I think part of it's down to game time. But yeah. is he going to want to stick around or will he, will he be wanting a loan, you know? Will he want to be just getting regular game time? Because how is he going to kick on otherwise? Well, don't forget, though, Jake. Ian turned around to us post-match two weeks ago and said he's not going to throw players underneath the bus. He's mm. going to give the players who got us into this position the respect that they are due. Yeah. So if players who do want to go, it's because they want to go as opposed to Ian, and Ian wanting them out. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have to ask yourself, who would you rather have to try and turn the game around or win you a game? Akinola or Sol? For me, it's got to be Sol. I think we've got two. As long as we've got Wiltshire and the other attacking options in terms of Vice, Banton, etc. Uh, is Akinola surplus to requirements of Clarence Park? Possibly. I agree with you to a degree, Bev. Um, Liam Sol, he, he looks a footballer. I know I've said that before. He looks a perfect size and shape and everything for a footballer. But he hasn't done it yet for us. Um, maybe it will come good, but I think Akinola is actually showing more than him at the moment. Yeah, I I, I think Akinola has, and but then on the counterpoint, like Lee, like actually you both said, Liam Soul on the face of it looks much more exciting. I remember when he signed in the summer, everyone was like, "Whoa, oh, this is a good signing." That loan mm. period he had with us, but it was similar. He didn't get much game time under Ian, but when he did, he really shone through. But this season, he hasn't well, got been a bit game. generous there, Jay. If he shone through that much, Ian would have kept sticking him on the bench. Yeah, I, I thought he really did change games when he came on then. But this season, he hasn't really kicked on at all. And Ian seems to have lost even more trust in him. So, um, but, you know, it, it's tricky. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if we see at least one of them. But I think, when you say that Ian's lost trust in him, I think he's justified to lose that trust because yeah. uh, he hasn't shown it. So it's fair played on that one. But that, is the, but that is the requisite, though, Dave. He could have binned off half of the squad at this point because 
they've not exactly sort of shown the form from the earlier sort of two or three months, have they, really? You know, is, I mean, uh, to be fair, I could think of uh, at least half a dozen more shocking performances than that of Liam, Liam Sol coming off the bench for 10 minutes each time. I mean, you know, it, it's... Do you is remember, probably... after 15 games, a few games, about five games ago, I uh, said Ian's points total was um, his fifth out of his seven seasons. <clears> like. <throat> now it's his second highest after 20 games. So it's, it's a very fine balance. Um, so it's difficult to criticise the side too much when you look at that. It's hard to criticise the side, but you're looking at it overall. Yeah. If you look at the performances and the results we had prior to Christmas or prior to the Forest Green game, absolutely. You know, it, it, was, it was a pleasure to watch. It was very easy on the eye. We were taking teams apart. And even when we come up to the likes of Dorking, we had a good account of ourselves. You know, you take out from sort of Christmas on, onwards, it's been like a relatively no show. Yes, we've had one or two smatterings of three points here and there to sort of paper over the proverbial cracks. But it's been nowhere near the levels that we had pre-Christmas. So that's what people are focusing on because you're only good as, as your last game. Um, you know, the, the heady heights of Forest, Forest Green game, they're long gone now. They're right in the back of their memory because what we've been served up on a platter for the last month, mate, has been nowhere near what has been expected. So that's why people get the hump because they know these players and they know what they're capable of. And if they haven't been doing it, there's got to be a reason. But I've shown the last game and a half one or two signs of possibly getting back to it. Yeah, and absolutely. the next two games are, are going to really show us whether they can do it. Because our record against sides in the top 10 is, is abysmal this season. All our wins have come against the bottom sides. Thanks to Eastbourne going above us the other day. We have now beaten one side in the top 10. <laughs> um, but it's not a great statistic, is it? No, it's not at all. And that's why these two games massive, really. I mean, you know, if you can get three points at a minimum, you know, that's, I think, a decent return. Um, talking of Saturday, Lee, Dave, what do you think? Do you think Cameron Green or should come in on Saturday? Do you think we should put him straight into the side, be it left back or maybe, you know, somewhere else? I mean, I, I think, yes. I think a player of his quality. But I don't know what you think. If we want to be attacking, uh, you could play him as uh, further up the field down the left. Yeah. Um, if you want to, you know, really attack, have not while they're possibly a bit low on confidence. But if you just want him as a left wing back, um, then yeah, either, either way, I think you'd almost certainly start with him. I can't believe we won't. Yeah. yeah, you don't sign that quality of player and leave him on the bench. It's just, you know, a criminal. Um, I know Ian has done it at times uh, to <laughs> sign a player on loan and then only sort of bring him for the last, you know, game of his spell. But no, he's here for the duration and he's going to play every single minute unless injured. But yeah. 22 years old, so he's going to be full of beans and just what we need. Ah, they would have done knocking a few goals as well. It's it's interesting, isn't it? You know, once we lost Devonte, we went sort of a two full backs, you know, Dave Deasy and Alex Lankshire, who defended well but didn't get forward an awful much, did they? But now we've got Aaron Jones and Cameron Green, who we know will absolutely bomb on and overlap and get the crosses in. I just say, right. oh, sorry. I was, sorry, Lee, I was going to say, talking to right backs, um, I had a quick chat with um, Michael Clark when we were at Chippenham because uh, he was doing a pre match warm up and he was doing it again Saturday. His recent injury was a knee injury, not related to his, I think, pelvic, wasn't it, before? Um, and that has cleared up. So he's quite optimistic. He could come into contention in the next few weeks. Last time he said that, it all went disastrously wrong for him. So I, I mean, to fair, if right. he was a horse, he'd be shot, wouldn't he, by now? <laughs> um, but getting. Getting back to Devonte, I had a really nice chat with him on Saturday. He's no longer on crutches. Um, I spoke to him, had a really good chat. He feels, you know, you can see that really um, that massive sort of infectious smile is back on his face now. And he's walking with a little bit more confidence. He's, you know, he's nowhere near anything, you know, coming a kicking a ball. But just to see him there back at Clarence Park in a Saints tracksuit was, uh, was a sight to behold. It really was. It's brilliant. And we, we need him, don't we? But you talk about Michael Clark. He's almost been the forgotten man this season, hasn't he? You know, squad wise and injury wise, he's well, missed... not well. Not on the physio table, mate. I can say well, that. I know, but he's missed so much of this season. After what we have to say last season, even though it's curtailed, is easily his best performances in a Saint shirt. He was superb at right back. So it'd be great to get him back. Don't rush him into the team. We had to rush him in last time because of <clears throat> squad issues. Don't rush him back. Give him a chance to 
earn his way back and hopefully he can play a part in the running. Well, De- Devante might not be in the team, but hasn't Tim Petty been watching him on telly a bit lately, Jake? <clears throat> yeah, apparently he was in some reality TV show, wasn't he, a couple of years ago? So I, so. I have no idea what it was, but That's you want to find... We Give can't all live in a Tim Petty wonderland where you've got hours to burn watching crap TV, fellas. I mean, crap covers it, judging by what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> right, any, any other business? Any other business? That's very, that's very, I mean, that's very I mean, formal, isn't it? We have to predict for uh, having yeah. a good sleep, don't we? But it's been quite a quiet week, really, for the Saints, isn't it, to be honest? It's How's the van, nice. Tavs? Uh, written <laughs> off. It's gone. So what 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 are you driving now, mate? Uh, penny farthing. <laughs> Had to, no, um, I thought yeah, we have our son's car, so uh, that's all right. And I've ordered a brand new car, which is coming in May or June. Okay. New money bags, Tavana. I know. Again, forking out on music rights. New car. car. It, it's all from winning that fifty-fifty ticket at Bath City early in the season. I'm still working my way through that. I tell you what, your lady, she's a lucky, lucky woman, isn't she? Well, well, because she's not seeing me tonight, yeah. <laughs> Deary me. Um, so Predictions. Haven't, haven't, what are we going with? Hopefully, also, we see plenty of Saints fans travel to the next two games. If you're watching this, you're free either day. Get to it. Go get behind the Saints. But I'm going to say, yeah. for haven't, I'm going to say 2-1 Saints. Oh, you swine. I was going to say that. <laughs> you can. You're right, don't mind. Yeah, 2 1 Saints. That's what I was going to go for. Funny enough, just had a message from Tim Petty with a load of smiley faces. We soon wipe that look off his face. And the Epsley. I'm going to go 1 1, I think. I'm going to go 0 0 for that. Ooh, oh, nil, boys, nil. I think we'll take that definitely. Oh, definitely. All day. All day. That would keep us in the hunt, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that defeat um, at Chippenham last week, it was only our second away league defeat of the season. Which is a pretty good record. <laughs> I know we've been a bit downbeat about it, but uh, we've had a good run away from home. So what you're saying is six points in the next few games, yeah? Four, four from two will be will suffice. We don't wish to be greedy. <laughs> Sound like us. But <laughs> hopefully the Saints will surprise us at least. Um, but I think as we've been saying throughout, just battle, lads. Just fight for it and we've got a chance. It'd be interesting to hear what other City fans think that's going to be the next sort of few games. Jacob, do you want to give them the Twitter handle, my friend? Yeah, at a pod full of Saints on Twitter. If you want to berate us or tell us, you know, how bad we are at predictions or anything else, you know. You don't need to berate us, mate. We can get that from, from the owners, any sort of data we can just go down to the club. <laughs> yeah, well, if you've got any views on Tannoy, let Dave know. Oh, for crying out loud, the nonsense <laughs> we had Saturday. Oh, for goodness sake, treat Jake, those sets of reporters with equal respect. Off. Look at him now. He's I'm, so, I'm sorry. Jacob, my I'm God, sorry. man. There was one incident Saturday, by the way, which you will yeah. have noticed, of course. Um, after 66 minutes, yeah. and the applause broke out. We have Slough supporters. It gradually worked its way around the ground. The Slough management team didn't even know it was going to happen. Uh, and it was in memory or honour, if you like, of uh, Neil Baker's, he's a joint manager at Slough, his father, who sadly passed away last week, from battle with cancer. Um, I haven't checked, but I probably saw him play because he played for Aldershot Town and 400 games for Farnborough Town. So he probably played against us in the past. So uh, that was a nice touch by Slough fans. And of course, a good number of ours joined in as well. Yeah, it, it was a lovely moment. And we have to say, you know, Slough as a club has had a very difficult couple of weeks. So our hearts go out to them, you know, another tragedy as well. Um, and it was, it was notable online afterwards how many comments there were from Slough Town fans the management team of Slough and all their officials saying how much they appreciated the support at Clarence Park on the day for that. So, yeah, well done, everyone. And, yeah, just terribly sad. Right. But, I think that's it, boys. There yeah, is indeed. On that and note. That, <laughs> and that, we will uh, see you next week with uh, lots to talk about, I'm very sure. Yes, <laughs> we'll see you next Saturday when uh, Heaven and Waterlooville's winless run at Wesley Park is stretched to eight games. Of what are you doing there? What's the, what, what are we doing? <laughs> it's a wave, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, right, bye-bye, everyone. Press, press the button. <laughs>